If you're connected to the Microsoft Exchange server with others on that same server, you can give them access to your calendar in order to see what you have scheduled. So that way they don't schedule you on a day and a time that you already have blocked out. And then, you know, double book or triple book you. Now when giving access to somebody to view your calendar, there might be some appointments, events, or meetings that are personal or private, and you don't want them to know anything about them. You can mark them as private. By doing so, it will only display the time scheduled on a date or days, if it's an event, and the subject will be private appointment, nothing else. They can't even double-click to open up the appointment. So, for example, like Easter Egg Hunt, the location is Bagok Farms. If I mark that as private, well, for me, I won't see it here, but if I mark it private and give access to Carrie to my calendar to be able to schedule for me or just see what I have scheduled, It'll just say private appointment, and that's it. And when she double clicks on that, it won't open up. But for my end here, well, I'll see everything. So to go ahead and mark this as private, you can do it one of many ways. You can go ahead and select it, come up here on its related contextual appointment tab, go to the tags group, and there you go, private. You can see in the pop up, mark this item as private so that other people cannot see the details of it. That's a bit simplistic. Other people means, well, other people that you allow access to through the Exchange server to view your calendar. And we'll talk about that in a later training video. Right now we just want to set it up so when I select it and it's marked. See, well, it's highlighted. And down below you won't see it here. If you want to go ahead and hover over it, you can see in the pop-up it's locked, meaning it's private just for your eyes only. Let's go ahead and double-click to open it up. You can see also if you want to mark it after you open it up here, you know, on the event tab, tags group, there it is, private. You can deselect it, but we won't do that. Let me go ahead and close out. And when you go to another view, like let's come up here, go to the Home tab. Let's view it by week. Let me go to the 20th here, actually click on it, and it'll jump right to the Day view. And you can see right there it's locked. So let me come back up here, click on the Home tab, and go to the, let's do the week instead of the work week, and you can see it's locked. So now you know that, hey, that's not going to be seen by anybody else but me. Well, anybody else who I share the calendar through the network with or across the Internet. Of course, if somebody looks over your shoulder, well, busted, they can see it right there. And then to go ahead and remove it, well, with it selected, I can just come up here, and when I deselect it, the lock is removed. Now, anybody who I share this calendar with will see that I'm going on an Easter egg hunt. And then they'll want to join me, and there'll just be too much competition in gathering all those eggs. To print the calendar, just come up here, click on the File tab, go backstage down to Print, or you can use the shortcut keys, Control-P. The default style is month, and you can see it's for March. Go ahead and click on it to zoom in, and what you see here is the actual size of what's going to be coming out of your printer. So let's go ahead and, it's pretty legible, let me click on it to zoom out. And if I don't want March, I want, let's say, April through May, then come over here and click on the print options, and you can see down below the print range, choose a start date. You can type it in, but I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow and go over to April 1st, and then the end date will be the end of May, so I can get all of May included. There you go. Click on Preview, and do I get both months? There's April, click Next. There's May, cool, success. And you do have other styles you can look at. Let me click on the trifold, see what that's about. It's divided into three sections. Let me click on it to zoom in. The first section is the day of February the 25th. It's a Sunday. Scroll over tasks that are due that day. I got nothing. Whew, that was a close one. And then the week. And for the week, we had a potluck. Oh, that was fun. And that's the week of the 25th through March the 3rd. So if I come down here and I advance to the next page, it's going to be February the 26th. So the first page was the 25th, the 26th. And if you don't want to print off all these pages, maybe just, well, the first five. Let's see if I go to page five, type it in, hit enter. That's March the 1st. So let's go ahead and include the last few days of February and March the 1st. So that's the first five pages. Come over here and click on the print options. And there you go. You see where it says if you want to choose what pages you want to print. Go ahead and select it and then type in we want one through five. Or if you want to skip a page like page two, just go one comma and then three through five. And of course, you can set up your print range down below. I'm going to come up here, click on the page setup. And the trifold, again, has three sections. The left section is the daily calendar, and then the middle section, then the right section. You can click on the drop-down arrows and choose whatever else you want to include in there. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. And up here, print this calendar. Well, you can create additional calendars. 
And we talked about that in an earlier training video that you got to create additional folders for that calendar view. And when you do, you'll get the option to print those other calendars. So be mindful of that if you have additional calendars and you don't want to print the default one. Click on the drop down arrow and choose the other one, whatever name you gave it. There's basically no difference between scheduling a meeting and an appointment except for one key thing. And that is with the meeting, you can invite somebody via email. And as a recap, when it comes to scheduling an appointment, you can come up here on the Home tab to the New Group, and there it is, as opposed to a new meeting. Now the difference between the two, well, you can see the two dudes here, is that when you have an appointment and you're going to invite somebody to join you, that's what's called a meeting, according to Outlook here. So if I click on New Appointment, you can see up at the top it's called Appointment, and you're going to have the same fields down below in the meeting when it comes to scheduling that. But in addition to what you see here, like the subject, location, the start, end dates, and times, you're going to have a two field that you can type in an email address or as many as you want to invite those people to your appointment, which would be a meeting. And if you're in here and you're like, well, wait a second, I want to schedule a meeting, you don't have to close out of this. You can actually convert the appointment to a meeting by coming over here and in the attendees group, click on invite. When you click on it, there you go. Up at the top, it goes from appointment to meeting. You get the same fields down below, but in addition, you get the send button and also the two fields. So when you type in somebody's email address, you need to send it off. And then in addition to that, if you're connected to the Microsoft Exchange server, you get the rooms button and the room finder task pane, which we'll go over in just a minute. And then if you're like, no, I changed my mind. I want to go back to scheduling an appointment. I don't want to invite anybody. You can close out or if you actually want to schedule an appointment and you don't want to recreate it, just go ahead in the attendees group and click on cancel invitation and you're back to an appointment. Let's go ahead and close out. And if that's not the way that you're going about doing this, you can go right directly to new meeting, click on it, and there you go, same window. So when you want to invite somebody, you can go ahead and type in their email address. Let's type in care. Oh, there you go. With it highlighted, hit the tab key and it pulls your name right in. Now what you need to know is that when you send this off to Carrie, she's going to get the option on her end to accept this meeting, reject it, propose a new time, or mark it as tentative, like, well, I'm not sure if I can make it just yet. And you'll get those responses, which we'll talk about in our later training video. For right now, I want to keep it simple. And in addition to this, whenever you type in an email address in the to field, by default, they're required, or on their end, they'll get the message that says that they're required to attend the meeting. If they're not required, but their attendance is optional, then to go ahead and to change that, you have to click on the To button. And down below, you can see the fields Required, Optional, and, well, Resources. We'll go over in just a minute. So you can see it's required. So anytime you type in an email address here, it puts them right in the Required field. To change that, well, go ahead and delete it. And then with the person's name selected up above, just come down below and click on Optional. Or if they're not listed and you want to go ahead and type in their email addresses, well, type them in the optional field. And remember, if you have more than one, use the delimiter semicolon to separate each of those email addresses. So their email address semicolon, another email address semicolon, and so on. And then when you're done, click OK. And you'll see here there's nothing that identifies if they're optional or required. Unless, again, you click on the to field. But on their end, they'll see it. And we'll cover that in a later training video. Let's keep it simple here. And then down below, the subject of this meeting. Hey, we have fun meetings. We like to carve pumpkins. That's just the way we roll here. Let's go and do the location. You can type in a location. Smashing Pumpkins Farms. That's a pretty cool place to go. Or if you want, you can come over here if you're connected to the Exchange server. And if you're doing it at the office, the IT person has it set up. You can click on Rooms. Or you can click on the drop down arrow if it's something that was done recently. It will have the most recent ones listed here. You can select it, but you can go ahead and click on rooms and it opens up. And we only have one room, training room, so it's either booked or it's not. In any case, if you've got more training rooms, it might be training room one, two, three, four, or the gauntlet room, whatever you name them. Just go ahead with the selected, click on rooms and click OK. And it's going to update the location from Smashing Pumpkins to, well, yes to training room. So let's go ahead and clear that out. And you'll see it listed up here, the training room, which is in the to field. Now why is that? Let's go ahead and click on the to button. It's a resource. And what's going on here is that the exchange server is keeping track of this because after we select it, it's not going to show it over here because the room finder, we need to find out if this room is available. 
And because it's on a Saturday during a non-working time, it's not going to update it and show us. It's like, uh, well, we don't work during those hours. Again, by default, it's Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, the default working times for Outlook. And I'll show you in a later training video how you can change that. And so if it's like on a weekday, let me come down here and change the start date and time, go to the 5th. And then you can see it's updating it over here. Choose an available room. And it's available. And you can see it's available from 8 to 8.30, from 8.30 to 9. And I'm not going to do it during hours. And if I scroll down to the bottom, again, the standard default is Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. So if I schedule it after, I can't see if it's available because that's after hours. But in any case, I'll go ahead and do that. And if it's in conflict with somebody else who has it scheduled, it'll show up over here that says oh, it's not available. It's busy. In any case, let's see, 5 to 5.30, half hours, not long enough to carve a good pumpkin. Let's go ahead and do to 6 p.m. Refreshes, make sure everything's grisly over here as it connects to the Exchange server. And if it's still available, there you go, it's available. Otherwise, it would let you know that it's not available during those times. So you can take a gander really quick. That way you can mark it off if it's not available here, here, or here. You can say, well, I guess I'll have to schedule it at a later time. But ours is after hours and it's not showing me that anybody else has it scheduled, so we're good. Now, another option you may want to consider is the scheduling assistant. It's up here on the meeting tab in the show group, and it's right there, and it's going to be available whether you're connected to the Exchange server or not, but it's only really helpful when you're connected to the Exchange server because that way you can find the best times for the meeting by checking other people's calendars. So is Carrie busy from 5 to 6 p.m. October the 5th? Before I go ahead and send it off and say, hey, and then get into this thing of like, hey, I'm already busy. Why don't you check this scheduling assistant? Well, let's go ahead and check it to be sure. Click on it. Updates the window. And OK, here we go. All the attendees, me, Carrie, and the training room. And the training room, when you look over and it shows you the time, well, for the date down below, October the 5th, because you can't see it. It's not showing you up in the main window here. But you can see down below it is October the 5th. And it's from 5 to 6. Now from 5 to 6, up at the top, where all attendees, it's got blue. What does blue mean? Down below it says it's busy. Well, so out of all the attendees down below, which one has the blue bar? And if you look and you go over, it is Carrie. She is busy from 5 to 6. Now, if that's not going to work, how do we fix this? Do we just go ahead and cancel the meeting? Or better yet, how about if we just schedule it beforehand? Hover over the left-hand side as one way to go ahead and reschedule the appointment until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and click and drag that out. Okay, now it's a two-hour meeting, but we're going to go ahead and click and drag the end of it back over. So now it's an hour meeting and not during the time that she's already has something else scheduled that shows here as being busy. Now you can do it down below, of course. You can go ahead and change with the date picker a different day and also, you know, change the hours here. In fact, you can also do something like 401 and hit enter. And this, of course, isn't going to show how minute it is. It's basically from 4 to 5. And then if you want a reminder, you know, go ahead and click on it. I'm going to choose none. Now you can come over here and add names and being connected to the Exchange server, it'll populate here. So instead of going back to the other view, by coming up here and clicking Appointment, you can add as many names as you want here. And if you want, you can send it from here. But let's go back to the Appointment. Everything looks grisly. Go ahead and click Send, and away it goes. And it's marked on my calendar at that time, October the 5th, from 4 to, well, it says 4, but when you hover over it, you can get the end time there. Location, the training room, and no reminder. Now, that's what it's like when you're connected to a Microsoft Exchange server. But what if you're not? How do you handle scheduling meetings? I mean, the steps are pretty much the same, except for you don't get the rooms option. Let me go ahead and show you. Let me close out of here and open up Outlook again. Only this time, when I double click, instead of choosing the Exchange, I've got another Outlook profile that's not connected. Select it, click OK. Come down below, go to the calendar, and then we need to jump right to October. So to do that, instead of clicking next, 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 or clicking and holding down the month and the year in the date navigator and going down to June and then doing it again to go out another three months, if you go past June with your left mouse button held down, it will start to go month by month if you hold it down and go down really far. Whoops, it goes too far. Okay, let's go back up just a wee bit until we get right back to 
There we go, October of 2018. So there's a nice little extra tidbit there when it comes to the date navigator. In any case, we want to go ahead and schedule this on Friday the 5th. So to do that, well, you can right click on it and go to new meeting request. Left click on that. Opens it up. It's from Special K. And you get the same fields as when you're connected to the Exchange server, except you don't get the Room button and the Room Finder. So how do you schedule the rooms? Well, let me go ahead and quickly set this up. So let's see, we want to do Carry, and there it is. Carry Heffernan, hit the Tab key. And again, click on the Two button, because if she's required, then you're good to go. If not, then delete it here and come down in the Optional section, type in her email address or well, there she is up there. You, you can go ahead and, okay, let me come down here and click on optional and add her there. And then, of course, I can delete that. In any case, go ahead and click OK. And then the subject is going to be. Now, for the location, if you want it to set this up where you can actually schedule a room, how you can do that is you can come back up here, click on the To button, and for your resources, have up here an email address that has the name of the room in it and actually have somebody who's in charge of that. Like, for example, if we just came down here and we typed in room 102 at dreamforce.us. So I would assign somebody this email address, like maybe the administrative assistant. And if we had three rooms, I could have like room 101, room 102, room 103 at dreamforce.us. And she would be in charge of all those emails. So she would have it set up, extra email accounts in her Outlook program. So anytime that she got this, it would be like an invite to her, but not really to her, but for that room. So when she got this and she looked at the date and times and she says, well, let's go ahead and click OK. As you can see, the location is going to be that email address. And she gets this and she's like, oh, wait a second. Uh, on my calendar that she's looking at, she sees that somebody else has that time. So then she can go ahead and reply and propose a new time, which we'll talk about in a later training video. Or just totally reject it and say, no, that doesn't work. Or accept it, in which case you're good to go and you're scheduled for that room at that time. So that's the workaround. Otherwise, Smashing Pumpkins Farms. Of course, we don't want it here. We want it at, let's do 5, and it's not AM. We can go ahead and do PM, hit the Tab key, and it'll update the second field, the end time, to the half hour increment beyond the start time here. Click on the drop down arrow and do 6 PM. And then well, let's get rid of the room email address here. And this. Invite Mr. Humphreys, hit the tab key. And again, he's required. Click on the two button, done some right in the required field. Of course, we can go ahead and change that. I'm not. He's required. Carrie's not. She may not be able to attend that night. Well, when we were connected to the exchange server in that scenario, she wasn't able to attend from five to six. We had to go from four to five, but in this scenario, she doesn't have anything scheduled that night. Which, by the way, when you come up here in the show group and click on scheduling, the scheduling assistant, you get these lines, which means there's no information because we're not connected, as in to the Exchange server. So we can only tell by looking at us if we're busy here. And you can see it's in a shade of gray, which means that it's outside of working hours. Yeah, I'm good with that. In any case, you can go ahead and click Send or go back to the appointment. And everything looks grisly. Let's go ahead and click on Send. Away it goes, and it's scheduled right there. A reoccurring meeting is a meeting that occurs on a regular basis. Like, for example, if I want to schedule a meeting every Friday night in the month of October to do prep work prior to our big investigation on Halloween night, October the 31st, to schedule the reoccurring meeting, I can do it one of many ways. I can either come up here on the Home tab to the New Group and click on New Meeting and then enter in the information down below. But when it comes to setting up the reoccurrence, go ahead and click on the Reoccurrence button in the Options group. And you get the appointment reoccurrence, which, by the way, is the same window as we talked about when we scheduled reoccurring appointments. So for this training video, I'm not going to cover all that over again because it's the same process, the same steps when it comes to scheduling and also updating one appointment, or in this case, one meeting within a series of meetings. If you just can't meet at the same time and also how to delete one of those and what will happen when you make changes to it. I go over all that, which is the same thing when it comes to meetings in the reoccurring appointment training video. So here, I'll just go ahead and fly through it of what we're trying to set up and how we're going to schedule. In any case, let's go ahead and close out of here because that's one way. The other way is to come up here in the new group and click on new items. Then go down to more items. 
and it's right there reoccurring meeting. The difference being is that it'll open up the meeting window and on top of that it's going to automatically open up the appointment reoccurrence window as well. So click on it and there it is. So I don't have to come over here and click on reoccurrence. It's already there for me. Oh, isn't that fancy? Okay, let's go ahead and close out and close out of that. And then finally, my favorite way of doing this, scheduling a reoccurring meeting, is just to right click anywhere. Because, well, wherever I right click, it's going to schedule it for that day, but you can change the day in the meeting window. So it's the third. So when I right click and I go down to new reoccurring meeting, click on it, you can see here it's on the third and in the appointment reoccurrence window, which it opened up for us so we don't have to come over here and click on reoccurrence. It's also starting on October the 3rd, so you can change it here, which you might as well, instead of canceling out and updating it here, because what you do here will overwrite that. This takes precedence, and so for the start time, it's going to be after working hours, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to 7 p.m., and it's going to be more than a half hour, so let's change it from 30 minutes to an hour, updates the end time to 8 p.m., then the recurrence pattern is going to be weekly, every week, not every two weeks. If it was, I'd type in two. Again, I cover all this in the reoccurring appointment training video. Same steps, same process. So let's go ahead and continue here to have it every Friday. Down below, when do you want to start? Well, it's the third. Is that a Friday? No, but what it's going to do is, is that it's going to look past the third and go to the first Friday. When it gets there, it's going to schedule the first meeting in a series of however many I choose. So you can leave it on the third and it'll just automatically go to the first available Friday after that, which would be the fifth. But if it makes you feel more comfortable, like it does for me, I'll select the fifth. And then no end date. So we have this meeting ongoing perpetually forever. No thanks. You can end after so many occurrences of it, like maybe the four, I think. Or if you're not sure, you want to get more particular, that you want to end this prior to Halloween. Select End By, click on the date picker, and let's go back. And let's see, starts the fifth. One, two, three. So it would be four. In any case, since I'm here, I'm going to select the 26, which will be our last meeting. And then click OK. And then it updates it here, and it tells us occurs every Wednesday and Friday. Every Wednesday? Uh-oh. Well, if you need to make any changes, come back up here, click on Recurrence, and it was checked over here. So it's a good idea to read this because, as you just saw, I missed it. Boy, I fly through this so fast and uncheck that. Okay, now I feel better. Let's go ahead and click OK. Occurs every Friday, not every Wednesday and Friday. Effective October the 5th until October the 26th from 7 to 8 p.m. Oh, that works. Now we just need to go ahead and invite because we haven't sent this meeting invitation yet till we type in somebody's email address, K for Carrie Heffernan. And then let's do Mr. Humphreys. Hit the tab key. Fabulous. What's the subject? Halloween investigation prep. Do you have a location? If not, and that's okay. You don't have to type one in, but if you don't, you click send. It's going to say, hey, are you sure about this? Because, well, it's thinking that maybe the people you're sending it to don't know where this is going to be at. Well, you don't have to put it in there, but it will remind you. So when I go ahead and click send, it says, do you want to send this meeting without a location? Yeah, go ahead and click send. Anyways, it updates it. And there you go, the reoccurring appointment beginning Friday, October the 5th at 7 p.m. And then again on the 12th, 19th, and the 26th. And like I said, if you want to be able to update one of these within the series or to delete one of them, you can watch my reoccurring appointment training video because it's the same for meetings. So if I right click on here and I want to be able to cancel a meeting for this occurrence or I want to go ahead and open this occurrence, not the entire series, and just change the time for that, go ahead and do that. But when it comes to updating any of your meetings, remember, they're invites. They've already been sent in this case here. So it'll give you the option to go ahead and send an update anytime you make a change to any one of these meetings, which we'll talk about in a later training video. Just as we learn how to mark our appointments as private, as you recall in that training video, when you're sharing your calendar or giving access to somebody else who's connected to the same Microsoft Exchange server as you are, so they can go ahead and see what times you got blocked out. But when they view it, they can see the subject, the details, they can double click to open it up. When you mark it as private, the subject will be titled private meeting and only show them the block time. And they won't be able to double click to open up and read the details of the meeting and like if you had any notes. So to go ahead and mark it private, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either go ahead and select. Now this one's in a series, as you recall. When we schedule this meeting, it's a reoccurring meeting. 
So it starts on October the 5th, and then it goes to the 12th, 19th, 26th, a total of four. So with it selected, you can come up here to its related contextual meeting series. So it's a reoccurring meeting. It's a series of them. Go to the tags group and select private, and then it updates all of them. Or you can go ahead and deselect it here, double click on that, and say the entire series. Now you can't pick one and mark that as private because in a series it won't let you do that. You won't get the option to go ahead and choose private. So let's do the entire series, click OK, and then of course come over here to the tags group, and there it is, private. Select it, go ahead and click save, and then close out, and it's all private. And in this view, it's not going to show that little lock there that it's private. So if you want to go ahead and change the views, like go to the home tab, and let's do the, let's do the week view. And there it is, let's see the 12th, but it's after hours, so scroll down, and there's the lock, and there's the arrows turning in on themselves to show you it's a reoccurring meeting. And this lock will also show up in the day view. You can double click on it here and open up the series and click OK. And then go ahead and deselect it and then save it, close out. And the lock's been removed. It's no longer private. Now that's the only indicator that you're going to get on your end if you're in the other views that your meeting has been marked as private. If you're in the month view, the only way that you're going to find out is that if you select it and look up here on its related contextual meeting series tab to see if that's been highlighted. So if I go back to the view, well, you can go on the view tab to go to the month or click on the home tab to go to the month view. And you can see if it's selected that up here on the related contextual meeting series tab, that is highlighted private. So everything in that series, the reoccurring meeting is private. You'll be able to see everything on your end. But when they log in to look at your calendar, they'll just see private meeting and the block time. To schedule a meeting from an email, just go ahead and double click to open up the email. Hover over the email address you want to schedule a meeting for or send a meeting invite to, in this case, Carrie. In the pop up, click on the drop down arrow, and there you go, schedule a meeting. Click on it. Opens up the meeting window, but not in the appointment view, but in the scheduling view, which is helpful as we talked about in an earlier training video. Only if you're both connected to the same Microsoft Exchange server that allows you to view their schedule, if they've got anything that, well, in this example, on March 8th from 5 to 5.30, if they did, down below in the legend, it could be blue, which would be busy, or they could be out of office or tentative, they're not sure if they got something else going on. You could just look up here, and in the color for the email address would be marked. Now, there's no information here because, as it says, it couldn't retrieve any information. It's not connected to the Exchange server. So, it's not helpful if you're not connected, in which case you may not want to mess in this view at all. But if you are, and you can see that it's free, well, go ahead and, if you're okay with the date and the time, click on Send and away it goes. Otherwise, you can go to the Appointment view if you're not connected, and then do the same thing here. So if I want to go ahead and change this, click on the Start Time for the date, and let's go to October. Let's do it on the third of Wednesday. And let's do it from four o'clock to four thirty. Yeah, it shouldn't take that long. And then of course you got your reminder options. I'll say none. And then I can go ahead and click send. But again, if you don't have a location, it's going to prompt you to say, hey, you don't have a location. Are you okay with that? Of course I am. Click send anyways and away it goes. Let me go ahead and close out and then let's go to our calendar to confirm that it was scheduled. It is, but hey, let's go ahead and go to it. So I can show you another way to jump right to that date. Right click anywhere in the calendar and go to go to date, click on it. Well, you can click on the drop down arrow, use the date picker, but when it's so far out in October, I don't want to click, 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 click. That's too much for me. Let me go ahead and delete that and type in 10 slash 1 slash 18, hit enter. It jumps right to October the 1st and there's my meeting with Carrie. Yay, it worked. Two things I want to talk about when it comes to scheduling a meeting. One, what it looks like when somebody invites you to a meeting, and the options that you get to accept, reject, or mark it as tentative. And then from the other side, when you send out an invite, and what it looks like when somebody accepts or rejects it, and the feelings that you get when you're rejected. No, I'm kidding about that last part. Well, as you can see over here, I've got a meeting that I scheduled with Carrie. She hasn't replied yet, and it's on October the 5th at 4 o'clock for pumpkin carving. And let me have Carrie schedule a meeting with me at the same time to see what it looks like on a few levels. One, how we can accept, reject, or mark it as tentative. And two, how do we deal with scheduling conflicts? 
And let's go back to our mail folder, the inbox, and oh, just came in. Oh, that was fast. And look at that. Haunted houses to investigate. Ooh, that sounds a lot more intriguing than carving pumpkins, getting into the spookiness of things. Now, as soon as you receive this message, by default, it's actually going to put it on your calendar. You want to see? Yeah, alrighty. Let's go ahead and go back to the calendar. That's going to be in October. So let's come up here on the Home tab to the Go To group. Click on its expandable dialog box button. And let's type in 10 slash 1 slash 18. Hit enter. Jumps right to it. And there you go. There's my pumpkin carving, what I scheduled and sent out as a meeting invite to Carrie. She hasn't responded yet. And then there you go. It's the meeting that she just scheduled that she sent to me. Automatically it gets put on my calendar, but it's faded. Showing me that it's ready to be scheduled. I just had to accept it. And you can see when I hover over it in the pop-up, you can see down at the bottom it says this meeting has not been accepted. And then you get more of the details like the start and end times and who the organizer is and the reminder of 15 minutes. You can go ahead and double click to open it up. And then there's the information. Please respond. This appointment conflicts with another one on your calendar. That's right. Because I had pumpkin carving. I had that scheduled first at four o'clock. In any case, you can come up here on the meeting tab in the respond group and you can accept it, mark it a tentative, decline it, or propose a new time, or just do a simple response. Now you can do it here, or let me go ahead and close out and go back to my folder, mail folder, and in the inbox, double click to open it up here, and let's maximize it. Now here, you're going to see that it's required. This is the only place that you're going to see if your attendance is required or is optional. As we talked about in an earlier training video when it came to scheduling meetings, well, this is what it looks like on your end when somebody invites you. So you want to check it here to see if, if it's optional for you or if you're required to attend. And then again, please respond. This appointment conflicts with another one on your calendar. And of course, you can come up here, as we talked about in an earlier training video, to the calendar group and click on the calendar to see if the meeting time works for you. We'll do that in just a second, but you can see over here in the respond group, you can accept it. Now, you get some options when it comes to accepting. Click on the drop down arrow. You can edit the response before you send it. In other words, it'll open up a window and you can type in some text that says, yeah, I'm happy to come. This sounds a lot better than pumpkin carving, which by the way, you haven't responded to. Or you can just send the response now and say, yeah, I'm coming. In which case, Outlook will double book you. It's just a flag for you to let you know that you got something else at that time, or you don't have to send a response. In which case, go ahead and select that, click off, tentative. You get the same options, decline. Well, if you don't send a response, oh, how wooed, then they won't ever know if you're interested, except on their end, they never received anything. So they assume that either you didn't get the email, you're on vacation, or you're just ignoring them. In any case, We'll talk about proposing a new time later on. You can click on the respond drop down arrow and just simply reply to it without doing any of the other options here. And then, like I said, you can click on the calendar button and it opens it up. Let's maximize it. And you can see down below there's pumpkin carving, what I had scheduled first. And then over here it's faded that I haven't accepted yet or done anything for that matter. Declining it or marketing as tentative. And you can see the block time here and it's still faded. And again, you can hover over it. It gives you the pop-up. At the bottom it says this meeting has not been accepted. Let's go ahead and close back out. And then within the actual message itself, you can come over here and click on the drop down arrow for location. And that will also show you where you don't have to come up here and click on the calendar. The time that she wants to block out is something that you already have scheduled for from 4 to 5. Well, let's go ahead and accept this. Come up here, click on the accept drop down arrow, and let's just go ahead and send the response now, and away it goes. Now, remember, every time you send out something, it creates a copy of it over in the sent items folder. Go ahead and select it, and oh, it's in the reading pane. What a pain for me. Let me go ahead and click on the view tab, go to the layout group, click on reading pane to turn it off, as we talked about in an earlier training video. And I don't like the groups, so excuse me why I clean up house. I'm going to right click on the subject header here, go down to view settings, click on group by, and say clear all, and click OK, click OK. There we go. OK. So there we go, Carrie Heffernan. We accepted going to the meeting, and you can see that we got a check mark there, so you can read it or view the check mark to indicate that you accepted it. Double click to open it up and maximize it. And you can see right there, accepted the haunted houses to investigate when it is. And right there again, Kirk Kershaw has accepted this meeting. Oh, that's nice to see that. Let's go ahead and close out to our calendar. Come down below, click on it. We need to go to October. So let's right click somewhere, go down to go to date. 
10 slash 1 slash 18, hit enter. And there you go, now it's solidified. We've got our haunted houses to investigate, which conflicts. At the same time, I've got my pumpkin carving. So if I want to go ahead and double click and open it back up, and let's say I change my mind. Well, first of all, you can see up here, it says this appointment conflicts with another one on your calendar. And if you're like, well, this isn't going to work, let me change my mind, you can send as many responses as you wishy-wash want to. So if you're wishy-washy and you're like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say tentative, I'm not sure, let's go ahead and send the response now. Then it updates here, and they get the response back on their calendar that says, now you're tentative. And you can see those little lines there, it's not solid anymore. That's the indicator for you're not sure yet. And then if you want to go ahead and just flat out decline, again, go ahead, double click. And then just come up here, click on the decline, and instead of just sending the response now, let's see what it looks like when we choose to edit the response before we send it. Click on it, and you can see in the subject, declined, and it says up here, no, I will not attend. And we'll type in, but I scheduled our pumpkin carving first and hadn't heard back, and so if you're really sad on haunted house investigation, then please keep pushing it. So in other words, We'll talk about this in a later training video, that when she gets rejected by me, she can actually click on a button called Send Update, and it will update and re-request that I come to the meeting, in which case it starts all over again, unless, of course, I decline it. But then again, she could keep sending it out to me and keep giving me those options until I finally give in and say yes. Or the other option we'll talk about later is how I can propose a new time. And let's go ahead and click on Send, and away it goes. It gets removed from my calendar. Oh, wash my hands of that. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like on our end when Carrie responds and accepts, rejects, or mark as tentative the meeting invite that I sent to her when I double click to open it up. You can see it says here no responses have been received for this meeting. And we're waiting on Carrie. So let's go ahead and close out. And so let's go ahead and go back to our inbox and wait for her reply here. That's the sent items. Click on the inbox. Well, there we go. And she accepted it. Great. All you have to do is go ahead and double click on it to open it up. It says Carrie has accepted this meeting. And for tentative and declined, well, nobody has tentatively accepted or has declined. Well, there's just one that I invited. That was Carrie. You can look at it here or, of course, close out. Go to the calendar. And let's right click to go to 10 slash 1 slash 18. Hit enter. And also double click there. And it will tell you. There you go. The responses came back as one accepted, zero tentative and zero declined. Again, just have one, so hey, we got 100% attendance. Let's go ahead and close out and go back to the inbox and see what it looks like when Carrie updates this. Besides accepting it, she changes her mind. Oh, there we go. Tentative. Well, you can see you got the question mark as opposed to the check mark, so it's like, uh? We're not sure that we can come. And you can double click on it and, of course, get the indicator as it says, tentatively accepting this meeting. And then you can go back to the calendar, open that up, and then it will say one for the tentative. And let's go ahead and have her decline it. There we go. There's the red X. And she had a response. Um, I have another more important meeting to attend that night. And then a happy face. Well, this brings up another good point. Anytime you type an uppercase in email etiquette, that's considered like yelling. So let's keep it in lowercase. Lower our voices in lowercase. So you can go ahead and double click to open it up. If there's more text to read than what you can see right here in the message preview, go back to the calendar and let's right click to go to the date 10 slash 1 slash 18. Hit enter and then double click here and now we're declined. Oh, rats. Well, I can go ahead, if she deleted that email, send an update, and she'll get the same email again, in which case she'll get the option. Let me go back to my inbox here. And then she'll, oh, you see how it cleared it out? All that automatically updated what was there and her response where she accepted, tentative, and then deleted it, cleared that out, and put in the latest update here. Hey, it's a party. I'm coming happy face. Oh, that's great. It will be a party.
Now, in the previous training video, we learned how to accept, reject, or mark as tentative meeting invites, which as a shortcut you can do when you're in the inbox, just right click on it, and you can accept, tentative, or decline it. And if you want to edit the response before you send it, it'll become available after you click on it. There you go, edit the response before sending. Go ahead and select that. I'm going to click cancel. But what's not available when you right click is the option to propose a new time. To be able to do that, let's double click to open it up. And in the respond group, there it is, propose new time. Click on the drop down arrow. And you can mark it as tentative saying I might be able to make it, in which case if you select this option, it will schedule it on your calendar with an understanding that you might not be able to make it. And then you can propose a new time or you can decline it altogether, not have it scheduled on your calendar and propose a new time. Let's go ahead and mark it as tentative, propose new time. And if you're connected to the Microsoft Exchange server, you'll be able to see over here, well, this is the time that she blocked, blue, is busy, and it's Friday, October the 5th. Let's go ahead and click the date picker and see if she's available on Wednesday, October the 3rd. Updates it, jumps over, and it's from 4 to 7. I didn't update that, so it's the same time. And I don't see anything there except it is shaded, and the lighter shade of gray are the non-working times. Remember, the default working hours in Outlook are from Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And I'll show you how you can change that in a later training video. But for right now, let's say that we're okay with this, or in my proposed time, I'm hoping that she's okay doing this towards the end of the working day and after working hours. So I can go ahead and click on Proposed Time. Opens up a message. There's the current time where it's at and the proposed time that I'm suggesting here. And then down below, you can type in whatever message you want, like, hey, this just works better for me. And then the subject, of course, is New Time Proposed. So she'll know. And when she opens it up, she'll be able to see and compare what the original versus the proposed is. So let's go ahead and click Send, and away it goes. And then, because we marked it as tentative, it's going to be scheduled on our calendar. Let's go to the calendar here. Come up, click in the Date Navigator on the month slash year. Hold it down and go past it to scroll to October 2018. And there it is. It's scheduled, but those lines mean that it's tentative. So with an understanding, you might not be able to make it. But if you can, well, you got the information here. So let's go ahead and go back to our inbox in the mail folder and see what it looks like when she accepts the proposed time. There we go. Let's go ahead and double click to open it up. OK, so the line through that date and time was the original. And here's the new proposed time. And don't assume that because it's there that that's the original proposed time that you sent off because she can't actually change that. In fact, instead of what I proposed from 4 to 7, she can accept it and tweak it and say, OK, well, let's do from 3.55 to 6.55 p.m. So make sure you take a look at that and that you're OK with that. And if you are, you need to accept it because it doesn't automatically accept it for you, even though you're the one that proposed it, because, again, she can make changes to it. So that looks good. Go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and see. Send the response now. And then go back to the calendar to verify. Click on March 2018. Roll past it to October 2018. And there we go. No longer on a Friday. It's now on a Wednesday. Double click to get the details. And great. And I can still propose a new time if I didn't like this one and flat out decline it and propose. I mean, you can keep doing this over and over again until you get it right. Now, we've got the pumpkin carving that I invited Carrie to come and attend. Let's see what it looks like from our end when she proposes a new time. Let's go back to the inbox. And there we go. And you can see it says this time works better. And you got the X means that she declined it. So let's go ahead and double click. And you can see down below, Carrie has declined and proposed a new time for this meeting. So the current or the original time is Thursday, October the 4th. And then the proposed is just a little over a week. October the 12th from 4 to 5. So I can come up here in the respond group and go ahead and accept it, or I can view all proposals, which for some reason is not working in Outlook 2016. In my previous training video in Outlook 2013, when I clicked on it, it opened up automatically to the scheduling assistant here, and it had a, a section up here that showed me all the proposals from all those who proposed a new time even if it's just one. In any case, it's not showing here. So let's go ahead and close out and double click to open it back up so I can get my respond back to accept the proposal. Go ahead and click on it. And then down here, I can type in whatever I want. Now, remember, she gave me the proposal for Friday, October the 12th from 4 to 5. 
and I can go ahead and click send, but I can go ahead and tweak it here. That's why I'm saying don't assume that when they accept the proposal and you get it back that it hasn't been tweaked. So if I tweak a JIT from 401 to 501 and then click send update and away it goes, then on her end she's going to open it up and she's going to see a line just as we did crossed out through the old time with an orange the new time. And hopefully she doesn't assume that that new time is what she proposed. I accepted her proposal as it were, but I tweaked the time from which she could go ahead with that email that I just sent off to her and propose a new time that instead of doing it just one minute past the hour to actually do it on the hour. So we can be in this battle back and forth of proposing and accepting or not accepting proposal, but updating her proposal to a new time and even on a different day. Now, if you want the numbers of how many accepted, rejected, or have not responded to your meeting request, as well as identifying them individually so you can send out a special invite and say, please come and beg, you can come over here to the meeting and, like for pumpkin carving, the night before I want to go out and purchase the exact number of pumpkins for those who are attending or accepted the meeting request, as well as donuts because, you know, carving those pumpkins, that works up an appetite. And I don't want to under-purchase or over-purchase. I want to keep within the budget. To find out, up to this point, of all those who are attending or accepted, go ahead and double-click on the meeting, and it's right there, the responses, if they have responded, and that brings up a good point. So I only send out one, and the response was tentative from Carrie. You can imagine in a scenario of, let's say, 20, if I got back five responses, and I have, like, maybe three accepted and two declined, and that's all I see, and I know I sent out 20, that means the other 15 have not responded yet. And if I want to find out exactly who accepted, then come up here on the meeting tab in the show group, and we're going to track them. Yes, click on it. And there you go. The following responses to this meeting have been received. In other words, as soon as I get it in the inbox, it automatically updates the screen here. And so for Carrie, who's an optional attendee, the response is tentative. Now, for the none, if they haven't responded, that's what you're going to see here. And for the meeting organizer, me, well, you're not going to get a response from me because I organized it. And, of course, also for the room. So that way I can find the 15 who haven't responded, the three who have accepted, and the two who haven't. And so I can get a little bit more pleading in my emails for those who haven't responded and direct it to them. And also the two who rejected to say, okay, this isn't team spirit. Everybody has to come. In any case, if they eventually do respond, but let's say they don't respond by replying to the email, maybe they lost it, or they told you over the phone, or they texted you, you can go ahead and update it manually here. So, for example, if Carrie was none, and I want to go ahead and come over here, click in the none, well, it's tentative, which brings up a good point. She can change her mind, remember? And, as we talked about in an earlier training video, she can go ahead and send another update saying, okay, it's not tentative, it's now accepted. It's not accepted, it's now declined. And she can keep going and going, and that just could drive you nuts. But in any case, you can go ahead and manually do it for her here if she calls you or texts you or, you know, you're eating lunch. And she says, oh, yeah, I'm accepting. Go ahead and update it to accepted. And you can do it as well for the optional to say, okay, now you're required. And then go ahead and save your work, close out. And then, of course, when you come back to double-click to get the tally, Instead of one tentative, now it updates to one accepted. Great, so that way you don't have to totally rely on their responses via email to have it automated here, although that would be ideal. So you don't have to go ahead and click on tracking, and you can see it keeps the changes here, and come in and do it manually. So you can do it this way. Let me go ahead and close out. Or if you got it selected here, the meeting, just come up to its related contextual meeting tab, go to the attendees group, and it's right there, tracking. And you can see the three dudes, the one with the check mark, the accepted, the X declined, of course, and then the question mark is, huh? like, uh, I'm not sure. Go ahead and click on it, and it brings up the tracking window. Now, if you want the tally, you can just come up here and click on appointment, and then you can see the tally. And let's go back to tracking in any case. Let's close out of here. Oh, one last thing. You can click on the drop-down arrow and copy the status to the clipboard. What that will do is take a snapshot of everything here, so you can go ahead and open up Microsoft Word, paste it there, or in Excel. Because in Excel, when you paste, it organizes them into their proper columns, like the name column, the attendance, and the responses. Because if you do it in Microsoft Word, or if you want to go ahead and, let's close out of here, 
and go back to the mail folder and double click in a blank area and paste it down in the body down below. It's not easily recognized by column because, well, the name is, but then the attendance floats over and it's part of the name column. I mean, it's a mess. In any case, you can go ahead and hit the space bar a gazillion times to get these lined up just perfectly or hit the tab key or you can watch my word training video on tab stops which is available here in the body of the message if you want to come up here and click on the format text tab go to the paragraph group click on its expandable dialog box button and then down below you have tabs that you can set numerically or if you want to do it visually like with the ruler here well by default the ruler's not showing it's up here I added it to the quick access toolbar that if I click on it it disappears so go ahead and add ruler click on it then you'll be able to see it then of course you can go ahead and with everything selected here click to add your first stop we'll do it at the well you see that's her name and email address we'll have to go out to the three inch mark and then for the next stop click and drag that oh do that again click and drag that over here got to make sure I'm on the ruler and let go see now we got it organized into columns so it's left aligned to that stop and to that one right there and it's just one tab how do you know just come up here in the paragraph group on the format text tab reveal your codes and the arrow represents hitting the tab key once so it goes from name to attendance that way you don't have to hit the tab key which is the default every five spaces to get it finally to about here we just hit it once and it goes all the way over until it hits that stop once it stops you can see in the pop-up it aligns everything to the left in any case you can go ahead and watch my word training video on tab stops to learn in greater detail about how to set these and if you want to go ahead and as i do here have them organized into columns with as little work as possible. If at any time you need to update a meeting, well on your end, not on their end, like the pumpkin carving, we can no longer do it from four to five, it's gotta be after working hours from five to six. Go ahead and double click on it, and then change the time, let's go down to five, and then when we're done, go ahead and click send update, and it updates it here and it sends it off over to Carrie in which case she can go ahead and accept or reject it but before I have her respond let's go ahead and have her update the meeting that she requested me to attend which is on Wednesday from 4 to 7 haunted houses to investigate let's have her send an update that it's now going to be on Thursday now it's interesting if you're sitting in here after you get that in the inbox you see it's right there automatically it calculates it and says hmm there's something different and it's supposed to be on Thursday and because I haven't responded it marks as tentative and so until I respond like if I declined as we talked about in earlier training videos then it removes it from the calendar if I accept it then it solidifies and it's no longer tentative so it'll float there kind of ghostly until I do something over in the inbox with haunted houses to investigate and double click and say let me go ahead and maximize it. Okay, there it was originally, and it's crossed through it Wednesday, October the 3rd, so you can make it out going, oh, that's what it was before. Okay, and now she wants it Thursday. Fabulous. I accept and send now. And away it goes. Now let's go ahead and have her, let's go back to our calendar, go down to, again, October, have her send a response about the pumpkin carving if she accepts it. And of course, she could propose a new time, in which case we can get into this battle of like, well, the proposed time doesn't work. Let me go ahead and update it. We covered that in previous training videos. And there you go. She accepted it. Great. We've accepted our meetings and we're going to have a fun weekend. When it comes to updating the meeting, like either the time or just some additional notes, come over here and let's do pumpkin carving. Double click. Make your changes, then click send update. Now when it comes to adding or deleting attendees, like for example, let me click to the right of training room, semicolon as the delimiter. To separate, hit the space bar, training room, from Mr. Humphrey's email address, hit the tab key, and there you go. Now remember, when you add an email to the to field, it's going to place it in the required field when you click on the to button. And there you go, Mr. Humphrey's right there. So if he's not required, but his attendance is optional, well, then come down here and type it in there. I'm going to leave it there and click OK. It rearranges it so whoever's required is at the front and then 
those that are optional, and then of course the training resources. Now, when you click on send update, when you add or delete attendees to the meeting, it's supposed to give you a pop-up, and I say supposed to because it's not working for me on this computer. It does on all my other computers that I work with. I'm using Microsoft Outlook here in this manner. It'll give you a pop-up that says, do you want to be able to send it out just to those who are invited or deleted or to everybody? So because it doesn't work here, I can't click on send update, but the workaround is an extra click. I have to come up here and click on the save button first. Then it's going to ask me to save changes and then send the update out to everybody or not save it and just keep the meeting open. So if it doesn't save it, well, that's no good. Let me go ahead and save it and click OK. And then it takes me to this screen, this screen that it should have taken me to when I clicked on send update in the first place, which I'm not going to do now because I've tried it many times and it just sends it out. It doesn't give me the option. So I wanted to show you the option. Hopefully it works for you. If not, then go ahead and click on save and then click OK and then you'll get the window. Like I said, it works on my other computers. I think this one just has a bug with the Outlook program. In any case, you can send the update to only those who have been added or deleted or to everybody. You want to send it to everybody because Carrie needs to know who else is coming so she can bring extra pumpkins for Mr. Humphreys and his family. Then go ahead and click OK and away it goes. It's gone. So if I want to go ahead and update it again and say, okay, Mr. Humphreys is not going to be coming. I'm going to cancel it for him. You can actually cancel the entire meeting which it will include everybody's email address in that cancellation. But if I just go ahead and remove one and delete Mr. Humphreys, and then, well, I have to save it first, but you should be able to click on send update, but I have to save it and then say yes, save the changes, okay, and then I get the window to send updates only to those added or deleted. So in this example, let's just do it to those who've been deleted, click okay, and away it goes. Now, to see what it looks like on the other person's end when they get a cancellation, all you have to do is go to the mail folder to your sent items because remember, everything that you send off, a copy of it is stored in the sent items folder. Select it, and that's what it looks like. Mr. Humphreys is going to get a red X through the calendar, cancel pumpkin carving. Double click, he'll open it up and go, okay, it's been canceled, and it's got his email address. Now, when I send a cancellation to everybody, then it'll be everybody's email addresses included in that. So keep that in mind that you may not want to do a sneaky cancellation and just try to get somebody from not coming and saying, hey, you're no longer invited. I mean, they could figure it out if they just see their email address, like by watching this training video and go, oh, I guess it's just me that they're canceling. So as opposed to, let me go ahead and close out. I know, bear with me. I really want to show you this. So let me go back to the calendar, click on March, and roll past with my mouse held down, the left button, to October. Pumpkin carving, double click. And then let's go ahead and do semicolon, Mr. Humphreys, tab key. Let's go ahead and send the update. And you see how it just flew out. It went out to everybody. It shouldn't do that. It should give you the pop-up to include everybody or not. In any case, let's go ahead and double click. And when I just cancel the meeting, then everybody's going to get this. So send cancellation. And what is it going to look like? Well, let's go back to the mail folder to the sent items. And there we go. There's the first cancellation just for Mr. Humphreys. And then the second double click. You see where it's got Mr. Humphreys there as required and carry is optional. She's now included. So that way you can do some deductive reasoning. If you were initially invited to a meeting and there's like 20 gazillion people, and then all of a sudden you get a response that says canceled and you're the only one in that response, that cancellation. Well, you've been canceled, but nobody else has. Otherwise, you'd see all their emails, whether in required or optional, down below. So there you go. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like when Carrie sends us an update. Let's go to the inbox here. When she includes Mr. Humphreys to that haunted house investigation in October, the one that I already accepted. Of course, she has to include everybody and not just those who she invited to attend the meeting. So she did include me. I ought to get that email very shortly. And there it is. So, well, we got the two dudes here. But when I double-click to open it up, you can see in the respond group, no response required. I for FYI for your information. Well, what's the dealio? And you can see next to it, change the response because I've already responded. And you can see down below, I accepted this yesterday. So I could change my response and go, I'm going to decline because down below, the difference is, is that I was the only one that was coming to this investigation. Now it's Mr. Humphreys. And I could say, well, if he's going, I'm not going. In any case, 
let's go ahead and close out and the two dudes that were right there updates to a blue circle with an eye in it like some updated information about the meeting a task is an assigned piece of work that must be completed within a certain time like cleaning out the fridge before everything inside it turns green but hey maybe you're going green in any case to keep track of all the tasks and manage them it's down below in the navigation pane it's the task folder it's that clipboard with the check mark there meaning that when you have something to do as far as the task goes hopefully you're marking them complete you can also mark your progress off as you're moving along in any case go ahead and hover over it you get the pop-up the hover peak which up here it says that there's nothing due later if you click on it and flip it up anything due today don't see anything down below either so hey we're good let's go ahead and click on the folder click on it again now there's more than one way to create a task here you can either come up here on the home tab click on new task you get the subject the start and due date fields let's go ahead and close out if you're in another folder and you don't want to leave that folder to create a new task and then in that folder like the contact folder the calendar come up here on the home tab to the new group click on new items the drop down arrow and there you go you can create a task there click off you can also right click in a blank area there's new task or double click in the blank area there's a new task or finally the shortcut keys that are universal but proprietary to the folder as in if I want to create a new task in this folder do control N as in Nancy and it creates a new task if I did it in the contacts folder it would create a new contact so let's come up here and type in a subject or ta or the name of the task that we want to do or or the name of the task we want to complete create ghost hunting PowerPoint presentation Ooh, that sounds spooky fun and then down below we have a due date you don't have to have any dude you don't have to have any dates you just go ahead and save and close and that's that but if you do want a date you don't have to have a start date you can say let's go ahead and say it's due this Saturday the 17th you can see up here the information area due in four days so you get the countdown we got four then if you're like yeah I'd like to add a start date maybe you don't know when you're supposed to start but when you do or you decide that you ought to that you better start sooner than later you can do it the same day today or let's do it tomorrow and then down below a reminder go ahead and check the box and by default it's going to be the last day that it's due well that's not too helpful well it is because it's earlier in the morning but by but by midnight on Saturday the 17th if I haven't completed it by then I'm in trouble and so maybe I want an earlier reminder than the same day I have to go ahead and change it click on the date picker and let's do the 15th so it starts on the 14th or when I should be starting but if for some reason I don't I get the pop-up in Outlook well that is you have to have Outlook well that is again you have to have Outlook open to get that pop-up and by then if I haven't done anything oh well at least I've got Thursday at 8 a.m. to remind me that is if I got the if I got the computer on and I get it at 8 a.m. because if I come in that night and then I open up Outlook well because it's past 8 a.m. it'll still pop up but because I came late it'll pop up at that time obviously so keep that in mind and then about the time you can click on the drop down arrow and change any of the times they're in half hour increments or if you want to get more persnickety let's go ahead and say it'll be 801 and then you can go ahead and hit enter to solidify that then you have the status well I haven't started it yet you can click on the drop down arrow and say it's in progress A little flag there to let you know well I'm thinking about it whatever in progress means to you and then completed well when I click completed it's going to mark the progress field at 100% so completed 100% information disappears as well as the reminder because hey you don't need a reminder if you completed it right in any case let's go ahead and click on the drop down arrow we'll talk about this later on about how to about the different stages and using the mark complete field in fact if I just go down even just a little bit that it's not completed it says it's in progress but I digress about this part because we'll cover it later and then waiting on somebody else it's still at 75 percent complete or deferred in any case let's go ahead and go back to not started it clears out the percent complete 
And then below that, you have the priority, normal. Click on it. You can go low or high, which you get those same options up here in the tags group. High, if I select high here, it says high to me there. Well, that's fun or low. Updates it there. We'll go to, well, let's do high. And then click. And then go ahead and hit the enter key and then it updates it here so it's highlighted well let me well let me move out of the way as high importance you can also mark it as private as we discussed in earlier training videos where if you're sharing your in this case tasks with other users across the network through the exchange they won't be able to take a look at the title and find out what tasks you have to complete it'll just be a block date and a range they won't even get access to your notes to find out if you do have any notes down below in the field here, which I will, which I do, or I will. Let's go ahead and type in some notes. But let me come up here, click on the format tab. I want to do a a list here. So let's click on the number, the numbered one, two, the numbering one, two, three, and let's do. So in order for me to have this ghost pre this ghost hunting PowerPoint presentation completed, I gotta have something that's gonna pop it, that's gonna bring it to life, you know, images, video, audio. And so Carrie's gonna get me that stuff as soon as soon as she can get it to me, I can go ahead and pop it into the program and be able to create something that will be fun for the kids on Halloween. And you can see here that I'm waiting upon Carrie for images, audio, and video for my PowerPoint presentation to come to life. Because without that, I mean, what do I have? Just a bunch of text? No, we got to have some action in there. So that'll be fun to go ahead and get that ready. But then again, I'm waiting. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.